Um, we're, we're now going to move on to our last speakers. Uh, we have uh, two Open Notes implementers from UC San Diego Health, Dr. Marlene Mill Millen, uh, the Chief Medical Information Officer, and Dr. Chris Longhurst, the Chief Information Officer and Acting Chief Medical Officer, and they're going to discuss their Open Notes implementation. Marlene and Chris will share how UC San Diego moved their implementation forward and also talk about some provocative ideas for the future of Open Notes as they see it uh, and patients' access to information in general. So, Marlene and Chris, we're all ears. Hi. Uh, let me know if uh, there's any trouble hearing me. Um, so, my name's Marlene Millen. I'm the CMIO for um, uh, the ambulatory side at UC San Diego, Chief Medical Information Officer. Um, and I started about two and a half years ago. You can go to the first slide, please. <coughs> so um, what I want to do is kind of go through our journey. Um, we started um, uh, kind of, a, you know, at the beginning, I'll say, with sharing patient data. So when I started at CMIO about two and a half years ago, um, I'm a primary care internist. I actually do a lot of um, different types of patients. I do a lot of end-of-life care. I do a lot of um, uh, psychiatric care. And I'd always personally sent information to my patients. I've always sent their, um, you know, their results. I've copied and pasted their uh, radiology. I've printed out their notes. I've, you know, discussed with them specialist notes and um, uh, given um, results, lab results, as much as I could. And uh, Chris Longhurst actually um, invited me to become the Chief Medical Information Officer. And when I started, UCSD in general was only really sharing certain types of labs and then only at seven days. So we were actually really sharing a lot of information with patients. Um, and one of the distinct memories I have about when I started was Chris kind of uh, met with me after a, a Gemba round that we had uh, and said, hey, have you heard of this thing called Open Notes? And I was like, no, what's that? And then he said, hey, it's sharing your notes with patients and isn't that great? And I said, yeah, that sounds really great. And then I remembered where kind of we were at UCSD, which is not quite, you know, even sharing like, you know, radiology and things like that yet. And also, I personally, as a doctor, I'm always bad with my right and left. My patients are kind of famous for having to wait at radiology to get a call to me to switch to radiology. So I was like, oh, do I really want them reading my personal notes where I've made, you know, maybe a right-left error or, um, you know, didn't write something as clearly as I should have? Um, <clears throat> but I think um, that that conversation with him sparked something in me where I was like, hey, you know, I'm a little, I'm worried about that, but I, I already feel like patients should look at their information. It, it, for me, it's helped with the care. Um, a lot of primary care doctors were doing what I was doing, which was sharing as much as we could with the patient, and we knew it helped with the care. Um, go ahead and move to the next slide, please. And so one of the things is, is taking on the role of CMIO, um, rather than jump right into open notes, which I, you know, was a little leery of at that point, but realized we had a lot of work to do just to start sharing information and moving ourselves forward with you know, giving information directly to patients. So we started, you know, just the similar things that you've already heard um, in earlier talks, but we, we really tried to start releasing things more quickly to patients, you know, more types of labs, uh, moved the, day, the, the time frame down from labs to within a day, um, and then including hospitalized patients. And then in addition, we, um, uh, about a year ago, started releasing uh, normal x-rays at seven days. As part of that normal x-rays, we also found like sometimes the radiologist thought it was normal because, you know, the patient already had metastatic cancer, um, but they would say worsening. And so patients were getting information sometimes through um, release of information or release of the, the, the radiology and things that actually moved us forward for discussing like what should patients see, how quickly should they get results and things like that. Um, next. That was our app, by the way. <laughs> uh, and then one of the things is uh, with Tom Savides, uh, became our lead patient experience, which we hadn't really had that role here at UCSD. And having a physician champion outside of IS actually started to help with releasing information to patients. And he actually became a big proponent of open notes. Um, I'll let Chris go next slide, please. So as uh, Dr. Millen said, uh, she's been in the CMIO role for about two and a half years. And I came here about three years ago from the uh, Children's Hospital at Stanford. And uh, in fact, I know next month, Natalie's going to be giving an update on Open Notes at Stanford Children's, which was an initiative I helped to start before uh, coming down here. And so uh, my previous experience really informed me that you know, this is not a technology project. This is very much a change management project. And so we did some brainstorming in, uh, internally on how we could really launch this initiative um, from a change management standpoint. And uh, at the same time, of course, Dr. Del Banco and, and colleagues from the consortium in Boston 
have been uh, sharing some terrific publications. We know that publications uh, in the peer-reviewed literature and data speak to uh, our faculty members. And so we arranged for uh, Tom to come out and give a grand rounds in the Department of Medicine. Fortunately, he also brought Liz uh, from Sacramento, who was a wonderful addition. And uh, uh, we took advantage of having him on site um, to not only give a talk to the Department of Medicine, but we had him give a uh, open talk that we invited the faculty from other departments, the Information Service Department as well. And then uh, I also was able to sneak him into our executive team meeting. And I'll tell you that that was really fantastic. Tom and I had a great time uh, in Liz with the execs and um, uh, he gave sort of an abbreviated, I'd say 15 minute version of the talk. And by the end of the uh, talk, our entire executive team, many of whom get their care here at UC San Diego Health, were just sold. Um, and uh, our CEO actually asked the question, why don't we just turn it on everywhere at once? And we said, well, let's back up. And so we'll take you through the journey that we've been on. But having that executive support um, in the background has been phenomenal as we've run into uh, faculty resistance and concerns. Next slide, please. So one of the things that came out of that uh, talk with Dr. Del Banco and Liz was um, the actually realizing how often they went into their own charts, too. Uh, I thought that was an interesting thing, uh, reading uh, notes. Um, uh, and then also wanting to see their results right away. So um, what we did to kind of do the next stage of trying to get us ready was um, start talking to folks in different departments to see who was ready to do automatic release. Um, you know, Chris really and uh, you know understood how important that was, and I did too, um, in order to share so that you didn't have to hit a button every time. Um, our primary care attendings actually were very enthusiastic about it, and our whole entire primary care department uh, automatically shares notes. Um, there is one provider I know that always unclicks it, but after about two weeks, she started forgetting and realized nothing bad happened. So she sent me a note and said, hey, I'm, I'm sharing my notes now also. Um, and then we had other areas. Uh, uh, urology was a big area here. Um, some areas in oncology um, are sharing their notes automatically also, meaning that they don't have to click it every time. And then we have a lot of physicians that are sharing, um, that, that um, set up to share in neurology and GI. <coughs> The interesting thing for us is we, um, we share our instance with um, UCI and Community Connect. And when we turned this on, we had to let them know we were doing this. They weren't quite as far along the journey as we were, but them having access, I'm hearing from physicians in those areas that they're actually automatically sharing those also. Um, so by kind of getting ahead at UCSD, we're actually sharing it in other places also and moving them along. Um, next field. So one of the things that um, I was kind of expecting was a lot of phone calls and issues about mistakes. Um, you know, uh, anyone who's on Epic knows it's a little bit hard to find the notes. Um, in fact, when we went live um, and I figured out where it was, I went on my kids are over at Rady's um, here in San Diego and they're actually doing open notes and hadn't really advertised it either. And I was like, wait, I can read all my kids' notes. Um, so it was a really cool experience for me as a patient um, and a user of the health system too. So um, once, you know, we went live, we were expecting this big storm coming at us and big issues, <coughs> excuse me. But, you know, there really wasn't um, much. I got a lot more emails from physicians kind of who, you know, were reading the email about the announcement and the next stage. Um, my favorite, I think I was called um, having a moonbeam notion uh, for, for trying to like, you know, share patient data with the patients directly. Uh, I had a very nice conversation with that person and I uh, actually brought them over to, um, to understanding why patient data is so important to be seen by the patient. Um, so even anything that was like, might be considered negative, I used it to kind of get the person to kind of see the patient side of things. Um, and then we, um, so we actually started sharing a lot of notes that were a little bit disappointed when we went and looked to see who actually read them. And you know, first month we only had about 70 people. And so one of the things we found is just like me not knowing is that it's not very obvious in Epic where it is. Um, and so the good news is with the upgrade that we just, we just moved to the 2018 version and without even really changing anything else, uh, our, our read rate did go up quite a bit to 300, <coughs> excuse me, a month. And um, Epic's actually coming up with some more updates. We were just on a call a short while ago, see some newer features that are gonna have to make it easier. We were alerting patients. We were including it in their you know, after visit information and things like that. Um, I did hear feedback from patients. They are reading them, and they really enjoy that. But the other interesting part is, um, like was mentioned earlier, is that it's, it's 
some patients don't want to look. They don't want to read the note. So I thought that was interesting too. Um, but they, the ones that, especially my really sick, you know, multi um, problem patients or ones that go to different um, health centers are really enjoying it. Um, next slide, please. So, you know, one of the uh, spots that we're at now is, you know, it's been a, quite a few months that we've been on and we're going to be approaching the one year mark in May. And um, I'd really like to move forward with sharing all of our notes. So one of the things I wanted to share with this group is just kind of what we're thinking of doing to kind of spread this further um, beyond the folks that are currently automatically sharing. And so um, one quick story is that we actually in the fall um, of 2018, we started sharing all radiology, not just the x-rays. And that actually um, brought up some really interesting discussions because we started sharing PET scans and CT scans. And oncology um, brought up a really good point for themselves because they discussed this internally, like, hey, when, when we release a note, patients have already been talked to and seen. But the radiology, you know, we need to call them beforehand before we release it. Um, so actually releasing notes is almost easier than radiology. So it was a really interesting feedback from them and it actually helped move the discussion along about open notes. Um, and so we're going to be targeting early summer. Um, and part of that is Epic is going to be updating and making it even easier to see notes. So we don't want to, we, we want to try to get more folks on it before that becomes easier so that people are kind of used to it. Um, and what we're going to do is have our, our, we have a bunch of uh, doctors that work in the IS department here. Um, and they get, they're starting to give regular talks and we're going to have them talk also and get feedback and kind of hear what people's concerns are. And so um, the, this, this, we did this a little bit a while ago for our upgrade, and that actually went really well. We got really nice feedback, and it was great to be on the ground. So having them, you know, be heard and um, hear how supportive our um, administrative is firsthand, because we all know people don't really read emails, um, I think will be really helpful. And then we're lucky, like, as Chris pointed out, we, we still have, we have very good support of our patient CEO and our physician group to kind of move forward with open notes. Um, I'm going to, next slide, please. Uh, Chris is going to finish us off here. So I was just looking up that Moonbeam email, and it reminded me that the initial announcement about Open Notes actually came out from our chief uh, executive officer and our chief experience officer, which I think was exactly the right um, message that this was about patient experience and it was a health system uh, initiative. Um, so a couple things that we're working on uh, as we uh, look towards the future. The first is that, um, as Marlene suggested, Epic clients uh, could be easier for patients to get access to these notes. So we've really been pushing the uh, Epic development folks along with some colleagues uh, uh, to ensure that the next version of their mobile app highlights it. And we've uh, actually uh, uh, been confirmed that we will have control of iconography so we can put the open notes icon in the mobile app. Um, the second is that we were early adopters of the uh, Apple Health Records um, initiative and actually just published some of our early results uh, last week. Um, and one of the questions that comes up from uh, reporters and others is, are the notes available in Apple Health Records? And the short answer is that they are not yet. And that's not because of Apple or Epic. It's actually because of the fire standard that creates the uh, interfaces between the two. Um, and so the Argonaut project, which owns the fire standard, um, has defined uh, a new version to include notes, and uh, we're working with both Apple and Epic to uh, to try to get that uh, moved forward. There are some interesting concerns that it's raising when uh, patients not only have uh, access to their notes but have ownership of their notes and could share them elsewhere. And I've pointed out, as have others, that they certainly can today with a simple copy and paste. But uh, you know, another round of some similar concerns um, that uh, we'll be working through, I think, in the coming time. And I'll leave with uh, sort of this question, uh, Liz asked me provocative, uh, what, what might that enable that uh, you actually could download and own your own notes and keep them with you and not just access them through a uh, patient portal? So thank you, I uh, look forward to the, the Q&A and I uh, appreciate everybody's time. Uh, we've got our, uh, both of our email addresses there as well as uh, Twitter handles and uh, we look forward to hearing from the community. Thank you guys.